Prime Minister Narendra Modi distributed over 70,000 appointment letters to newly recruited employees as part of the government's Rozgar Mela initiative. These new employees will work in various central and state government ministries including financial services, education, defence, railways and nuclear energy. Addressing the event, Modi said, India today has a determined government and political stability. Political corruption, inconsistencies in government programs and misuse of public funds were synonyms with previous governments. Union Home Minister Amit Shah chaired a meeting of disaster management ministries of the states and union territories likely to be affected by Cyclone Biparjoy. The meeting was held at a time when the extremely severe Cyclone Biparjoy is expected to cross the coastal areas of Gujarat, where rough sea conditions and strong winds prevail. Meanwhile, Shah also announced three major schemes for disaster management worth over 8,000 crore rupees to expand and modernize fire services in states to reduce the risk of urban flooding and for landslide mitigation. Indian Meteorological Department issued an orange alert for Saurashtra and Kutch coasts in Gujarat as Cyclone Biparjoy is expected to make landfall in state by the evening of June 15 as a very severe cyclonic storm. Meanwhile, Section 144 has been imposed in coastal areas of the Kutch district, restricting the movement of people in areas likely to be worst affected by the cyclonic storm. Prime Minister Modi also chaired a high-level meeting on Monday to review the preparedness of ministries and agencies of the centre as well as Gujarat to deal with the situation. Union Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar slammed ex-Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey for accusing the Indian government of threatening to shut down the social media network in the country. He rejected Jack Dorsey's claim that the Indian government has put pressure on the microblogging site to block accounts covering farmers' protest. He called the claim an outright lie and an attempt to brush out the very dubious period of the social media company's history. Retail inflation in India reduced to 4.25% in the month of May. This is the lowest inflation that the country experienced in two years. In April, it was 4.7% and 5.7% the previous month. The two-year low has been achieved due to significant reduction in food and core inflation. Notably, this is the fourth month during which the retail inflation has declined and third month during which the CPI-based inflation remained within RBI's comfort zone of 6%. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the trajectory of the India-U.S. partnership is unmistakable and filled with promise. While addressing the U.S.-India Business Council's India Idea Summit in Washington, D.C., Blinken spoke about the unique relationship shared between the world's oldest and largest democracies. Trade between India and the United States reached a record 191 billion US dollar in 2022, making the US India's largest trading partner. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar visited Sacred Buddhist Temple of Sarnath in Varanasi along with G20 delegates who came to attend the G20 Development Minister's meeting that was held on Monday. Earlier, the delegates of G20 meet as well as Jay Shankar took part in the Ganga Arti ritual at a ghat in Varanasi. A Chinese national identified as Feng Chengwen was apprehended at Kathmandu's Tribhuvan International Airport, Nepal. Authorities seized a substantial amount of illegal currency totaling 6 million US dollars, including currencies from various countries such as Nepal, Vietnam, Cambodia, India, Singapore, Malaysia, China, US and Thailand. This incident has prompted an investigation into a possible global racket. Further investigations have revealed that Feng Chengwen had deposited 10.2 million rupees in a Nepal bank. The Enforcement Directorate conducted raids at the residences and offices linked to Tamil Nadu Electricity Minister V. Senthil Balaji in a money laundering case. The Supreme Court had last month allowed an ED probe into an alleged cash for job scam against Balaji when he was the Transport Minister in the AIA DMK government in 2014, who also holds the prohibition and excise portfolio. 
At least 19 people got injured in Odisha after an explosion occurred in a blast furnace at Tata Steel at Mera Mandli in state's Thin Canal district. According to the statement released by Tata Steel, the accident occurred during an inspection work and injured have been shifted to a hospital in Katak. The National Investigation Agency filed its second supplementary charge sheet in the NIA Special Court Patna against three accused persons in the case related to the abduction and brutal murder of Naresh Singh Bhokta by the banned CPI Maoists in 2018. It comes just days after the NIA conducted widespread searches in Jharkhand and Bihar in connection with the case. The Indian senior men's team edged Vanuatu 1-0 at the Kalinga Stadium in Bhubaneswar, leading to them getting into the finals of the Intercontinental Cup 2023. This is the Indian team's seventh victory in their home turf. The victory took place after Sunil Chhetri scored the last goal for the team, which was indeed phenomenal. Indian Research Space Organization Chairman S. Somnath stated that Chandrayaan-3, the third edition of ISRO's lunar mission, would be launched between July 12 and 19, 2023, if tests go as planned. Chandrayaan-3 is a follow-on mission to Chandrayaan-2 to demonstrate end-to-end -end capability in safe landing and roving on the lunar surface. <laughs>